ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Because champions are made not for... Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. When you have your eyes on the stars, it's good to know champions are made, not born. Take basketball champion Bob Cousy, spectacular forward of the Boston Celtics. When Bob was just a lad of five, he practiced on the family drive, learned to pass, to shoot, to fake, and gave himself this one big break. He ate his Wheaties every flake. Today, Bob sparks that Boston team, still eats his Wheaties with fruit and cream. Champion Bob Cousy got together with Wheaties when he was five years old, 20 years ago. It's steady going with Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Come on, Bob, drive right in there. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto... The daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you Silver? Hooray! The Lone Ranger and Tonto were traveling through the Arrowhead Hills to reach Monument City late one afternoon. When suddenly, Easy, Silver. the silver cinch broke without warning. As the saddle slipped on the mighty stallion's back, the masked man leaped to the ground. Keep us hunting. What happened? The cinch broke, Toto. Oh, you tell me two-day gold cinch worn. Me sorry, me not fix it. Uh, it's my fault, Toto. I should have checked it this morning. Oh, what matter, Kimasabi? My ankles hurt. Oh, there's plenty good place in hill to camp, Kimasabi. Maybe we find one near. Make camp for night. That's a good idea, Tonto. I'll be able to doctor my ankle. Oh, it's bad. We're not closer to town when cinch breaks. Yeah, we'll ride to town in the morning, Tonto. I'd like to see Sudden Dean. Oh, him marshal, Monument City. Yes. And him plenty good lawman. One of the finest in the West. Meanwhile, two men who lived in town rode through the hills on their way home. Sutton Dean's strict law enforcement made it impossible for Doug Dimmock and Hayes Morgan to steal enough to support themselves, so they had to hunt the food they ate. Dusk was falling as Hayes Morgan looked disgustedly at the only game they'd been able to find. Uh, one wild turkey and a mighty skinny one at that. Game is getting scarce around here. If it gets any more scarce, we'll starve. We ought to go to work, Hayes, and the only job I could get would be janitor in the express office. Uh, who trusts you with a job there? Oh, Red Martin, the night watchman, is a friend of mine. Huh? He put in a good word for me with the manager. I heard there's $50,000 in paper money in the express office right now. There is. Reb said it'll be sent east on the train leaving town tomorrow morning. If we could get that money... Dog oh, talk sense, Doug. Even if we got it, we wouldn't have a chance in the world of staying free long enough to spend it. I don't know about that. Well, I do. But, hey, look. Up on the hillside. See that smoke? Yeah, someone's built a campfire. If they're cooking a meal, they might share it with us. Yeah, there's no harm in asking. Come on, we'll head for their campsite. Get, Get up there. Come on. Guiding their horses uphill, Doug and Hayes were still some distance from the camp when Doug signaled a halt. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Why stop here? Hayes, from here you'll get a good view of that campfire. Oh, what about it? Take a good look at the fellas beside it. Ah, uh, hey, one of them's masked. Come on, Hayes, we're getting out of here. Uh, yeah, come on. Though 
The two riders were too far away to be heard by the masked man or Toto. They guided their horses downhill as quietly as possible. When they reached the main trail to town, no, who, who, who? Hayes grumbled. You'd better have a good reason for turning your back on a chance at a square meal. I have a $50,000 reason. Huh? We'll steal that money from the express office and blame the masked man and his Indian pal for the robbery. Ah, oh, you're local. This is our chance to outsmart Marshal Dean. After we steal the money, we'll swear we saw the masked man and his partner right away from the express office. Huh? Even if they're gone, when the marshal comes here to look for them, he'll find the remains of their campfire and keep after them. Uh, no, Red Martin will know the truth. Uh, we'll figure out a way to deal with him. Come on, let's get back to town. Get up, get up. Come on. Shortly after midnight, Rep. Martin was dozing in his chair near the partly open express office window when Doug Dimmock and Hayes saw him. At the sight of the sleeping guard, Doug said, Rap on the window, Hayes. Try to talk him into opening the door. You get back out of sight. Right. The tapping on the window startled Reb. He leaped to his feet and grabbed his gun. Then he saw Hayes. How'd you like some coffee, Reb? Oh, will you bring me something to cafe? I've got it right here. Good for you. I'll unlock the door. It's against the rules to unlock the door, Hayes, but that coffee will hit the spot. Get your hands up, Red. Hey, You're covered. Boy, you Shut burn. up, Red. Step back inside and be quick about it. Close the door, Doug, and take his gun. Right. Hayes, you double-crossing skunk. If you think you'll get away with making a fool Shut of me. Up. I got his gun. Good. I'll keep him covered while you use the crowbar we brought with us to open the money chest. A few minutes later, Doug took the money from the chest. Look at it, Hayes. Look. We'll be on easy street for the rest of our lives. Put it in that canvas sack on the table. Yeah, that'll be better than trying to carry this much money in our pockets. As Hayes watched Doug put the currency into the canvas bag, Reb Martin backed slowly toward a peg on the wall that held the express manager's gun belt and holstered gun. When he was within reach of the weapon, he moved to grab it. But Doug saw him. Hayes, he's going for a gun. I'll kill you, too. You jughead! Hey, you got him. He was loco to go for that gun. Those shots will bring a crowd here on the double, Hayes. Uh, we've got the cash. Let's go. I'm with you. As they hurried from the back door of the office to the alley, Doug and Hayes heard the voices of excited townsmen coming to investigate the gunplay. Realizing they would enter the express office in a moment, the thieves concealed the stolen money beneath a water barrel. Then... We'll come back for the money later. Even so, it looks suspicious. Us being so close to the office. I'll take care of that. How? By knocking you out. Oh! Doug brought his gun barrel down hard against his friend's head. As Hayes fell to the ground, Doug quickly rubbed dust over his own clothing and shouted... Help! Help! Thieves! Killers! Help! When Sudden Dean and a number of townsmen reached the alley, Doug was trying to rouse Hayes. As soon as he saw the marshal, Doug exclaimed... Marshal Dean, a couple of fellas robbed the express office. They shot Reb Martin. Doug Jackson's from the office with Reb. What happened to you two? We saw him come out of the office, Marshal. We tried to stop him, but the masked gent slugged Hayes. His pal knocked me down. Oh, my head. He got away. Uh, what hit me? Uh, take it easy, Hayes. Uh, Doug, you're no good rattler. Hayes, hey, you... the masked man wrapped your head with his gun barrel. Oh, masked We're lucky man. we didn't stop a couple of bullets. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I reckon you're right. Walk ahead of me to the office, Doug. Right. You too, Hayes. You've a lot of questions to answer. At Doc Jackson's request, Marshal Dean's deputy had already cleared the office of curious townspeople. While Doc knelt beside Rep. Martin examining his wounds, Marshal Dean questioned Doug Dimmock and Hayes. They explained that they were heading for the back door of the cafe when they heard the shot. We came this way on the run. Just as we got to the door, the masked man and his Indian partner came out. Which way were they heading when they left here? Why, they rode for the trees on the other side of the alley. Before I could get a shot at them, they were out of sight. Yes, they must be heading for Arrowhead Hill. Eh? That's the only place around here they can hide. I'll get a posse and ride through the hills to look for them. If you capture them, we'll be able to identify them. Uh, Reb Martin will be able to identify them, too. Oh, is he alive, Doug? Yeah, but don't figure on asking him any questions. He's unconscious and likely to stay that way for a while. What about moving him? Well, I'll send for a stretcher and have him carried to my place. Good. I'll assign two deputies to stay with him. Why? As soon as he's able to talk... I want them on hand to get his story. I hope you get those crooks. I know the hills like the palm of my hand, Doc. I'll get them. 
And when I do, I hope they try to resist arrest. How come, Marshal? Because I'd just as soon kill him as capture him. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Jenny is ten, and is she good? She's skip rope champ of the neighborhood. She's so quick because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. <laughs> she's feeling her Cheerios. 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 That makes sense. Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O, and you'll agree. You like that delicious toasted oat flavor, and Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowl full, add good fresh milk, dig in, and start getting your go power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfast every day with delicious Cheerios and milk, and get that good go power. Then folks will say... Mm. She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue. As soon as the posse left town, Hayes went to Dr. Jackson's house to seek information about the wounded guard and first aid for his bruised head. Meanwhile, Doug Dimmock hurried to the deserted alley to retrieve the canvas sack they had concealed beneath the rain barrel. Shortly after he returned to his cabin, Hayes entered. I got the money, Hayes. Yeah? What's eating you? Oh, my head's aching so bad I can hardly see. Oh, I had to let you have it to make our story about the masked man convincing. Oh, with Reb alive, that story won't hold up. Mm, how is he? Unconscious. But Doc said he'll pull through. Why didn't you finish him while you were in the house? I would have, but the marshal's deputies are watching him so close, no one could get away with killing him. Uh, he'll talk. Yeah, one of the bullets brushed the side of Reb's head. Doc said he's unlikely to stay, he's likely to stay conscious for three, four hours, maybe longer. Hey, in three hours, the eastbound train will pull out of town. Yeah. We'll be on it, Hayes. Marshal Dean will be on our trail. We might as well give up, Doug. We might get a two or three hundred mile start on him before Reb talks. By that time, it'll be too late for him to catch us. Maybe. It's our only chance. So then I reckon we'd better take it. An hour later in camp in the Arrowhead Hills, the sound of approaching riders wakened the Lone Ranger. The masked man listened for a moment. Then tossed aside his blanket and called Otto. Uh, me wake, no savvy. Those riders are heading this way. Uh, me not savvy why them come here. Neither do I. But we'll not risk being taken by surprise. Come on, we'll move back into the trees and watch for them. From their place of concealment, the Lone Ranger and Toto waited until three riders came into view. As they drew rein in the moonlit clearing, Toto exclaimed, One fellow wear lawman badge. Toto, it's Sudden Dean. Masabi, him draw gun. There is no need to come and get us, Marshal Dean. We're both covered. Don't try a fast move. That's no way to greet old friends. Great shot. Thank your hands, mister. Got you tied out here with the $50,000. Oh, hold it, boys. <laughs> This man's the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? And his friend is Toto. Thanks for the identification, Sudden. Hey, man, I'm right sorry we busted into your camp like this, mister. You must have had a good reason. Fifty thousand dollars in paper money was stolen from the express office in town tonight. The thieves shot the watchman. Well, why did you come here? Dimmock and his friend Hayes told us they saw a masked man and an engine come from the express office after the shooting. If I'd have known you two were in the hills... I'd have caught him liars on the spot. Well, we made camp this evening to repair a broken cinch. I heard you captured a couple of killers over in Jackson County. Yeah, we left there two days ago. Say, uh, how would you and Tonto like to ride back to town with us? Fine. I'd like a chance to question Dimmick and his friends. Ah, and me want meat fellas who say we steal money and shoot watchmen. Come on, Tonto. The saddle scout and silver. Ah. The 
Lone Ranger, Toto, Sutton Dean, and the two deputies were a short distance from town when one of the men who had been left with Rep. Martin rode toward them. As soon as he saw the deputy, Marshal Dean signaled a halt. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh. Yes, oh. Tom Beach. Tom, what are you doing here? Why'd you leave Red Martin? Master Dean, I've got to talk to you about... Hey, mask man. He's a friend of mine, so speak up. What are you doing here? Red regained consciousness. He said Doug Dimmick and Hayes shot him and robbed the it's express Hayes office. Hayes and... Did you get Hayes and Dimmick? Oh, uh, that's what I want to tell you. I went to the cabin to arrest him, but they cleared out. They should be expected to. I looked all over town for him. Then just as the eastbound train was pulling out of the station, I saw him climbing aboard. Get away. I tried to stop him. But the train was already underway. I didn't have a chance. They got away. With $50,000 in stolen cash. How long ago did the train leave? Pulled out at daybreak, half an hour ago. That means it'll reach Big Bear Pass in about 45 minutes. Yes, that's right. It travels a winding road on account of the hills and mountains. I'll try to stop it at the pass. But you can't get there ahead of the train. I can if I follow the railroad tracks. But by riding cross country, I may be able to make it. Oh, no. Friend of yours or not, Marshal Dean, that gent's local. If he thinks he'll reach the pass in time to stop the train. If he can't do it, no one can, bitch. Come on, we're right after him. Get up there. Get up there. About 40 minutes after the train left Monument City... Doug Dimmick leaned back in his seat with a self-satisfied grin, while his partner, Hayes Morgan, looked out the window anxiously. Sit back and relax, Hayes. I'll feel a lot better when there's a couple of hundred miles between us and Monument City. We've nothing to worry about now. As soon as Webb talks, Marshal Dean will start looking for us. You'll have to look a long way. This train doesn't stop till it reaches Kansas City. Uh, I wish it didn't stop this side of the Canadian border. <laughs> Sudden Dean will be downright wild when he finds out we got away with the express money. Doug, look. Huh? Out the window. See that rider coming downhill? He's angling toward the tracks. He's traveling fast. Doug, he's masked. You sure? See for yourself. It's the same masked man we saw in the Arrowhead Hills. I saw that white horse brown hitched in his camp. You're right. But I don't tell you why he's heading for the tracks. If he keeps going as he is, he'll be directly in front of the train when he reaches the tracks. He'll try to stop the train. Mm. Doug, maybe he's after us. Maybe he wants to get square with us for framing it's him. more likely he's trying to get away from Marshal Dean and a posse. Come on, bring that carpet bag with the money. Where are you going? We'll climb over the top of the baggage car to the engine tender. The engineer and the fireman had also seen the Lone Ranger. With his hand on the throttle, engineer Fireball Murphy watched the hard-riding masked man. As the mighty stallion drew closer to the speeding engine, the young fireman shouted, Murphy, that owl who's going to try to stop us is sure shooting. Murph, did you hear me? You better get all the speed you can out of this engine. Jack, I've seen that gent somewhere before. A gang of train robbers must be waiting on the tracks ahead. He's signaling us to stop. Don't risk it, Murph. Only last week, the Union Pacific West farm was stopped That's by That's it, gang. Jack. That's what? Now I know who he is. I met him three years ago when I was working for the Union Pacific. Murph, what are you doing? I'm stopping this fire eater. But you can't, Murph. That's against the truck. Yes, Jughead, like... he's the Lone Ranger. Great sakes alive, did you have to stop the sudden? Oh, oh, oh easy, Teddy Big Fellow. Hi there, mister. Fireball Murphy. <laughs> Surprised to see me, huh? I'm glad to see you. Any other engineer would have questioned my mask. Easy, steady, big fella. Come aboard. Thanks, I plan to. What's the trouble? I'm looking for two men who boarded the train in Monument City. One's named Dimmick, and the other's Hayes Morgan. They're right here, Mr. Coverhill. The occupants of the engine cab turned and saw the outlaws standing in the half-empty engine tender with guns drawn. Get your hands up, sir. You're after us, huh? Yes, I want the money you stole from the express office in Monument City. I told you he was after us, Doug. Jump down to the cab and take the masked man's guns, Hayes. Right. <coughs> Doug. What's eating you? Get his gun. Uh, yeah. Look, Doug. Demick turned and saw Toto, Sutton Dean, and the posse riding toward the tracks from the hills. But he didn't see the Lone Ranger's lightning-fast draw. When he looked back at the masked man, a split second later, twin colts were leveled to fire. Before Doug could shoot, the Lone Ranger's guns roared. Silver bullets smashed the weapons in the outlaw's hands. Doug lost his balance and fell to the floor of the tender. <laughs> Just like old times. 
You smashed their guns, mister. My God. I'll get you, you... Buy a fast move and you'll stop a bullet. Uh, my hands are up. Don't shoot. Raise yours. Uh, do as he says, Doug. We're licked. That's good advice. We're lucky he didn't kill us for framing. All right. All right. All right. I give up. Keep your hands high. Hey, mister. Did you get the pole catch? They're right here, sudden. Good work. Come on down here, man. Uh, That'll be injured. Uh, Boys, uh, bring your hands up. Uh, I'll be right here, Marshal. You're both under arrest for stealing these fresh money. Shoot and rip Martin. If you search the carpet bag Hayes was carrying, you may find the money, Marshal. I'll search it, Marshal Dean. Go ahead, Beach. I'm downright obliged to you, mister. If you hadn't come here and stopped this train, those skunks would have gotten away. Fireball Murphy deserves the thanks, Sutton. If he hadn't stopped, we wouldn't have captured these men. Oh, don't thank me, mister. I'm downright glad of the chance to see you again. Marshal Dean, this carpet bag's filled with paper currency. Well, that's what we want, Beach. Press off his money. Now that you have the money in the prisoners, I don't know how to return to camp where we left our gear, Marshal. I hope I'll see you again before you leave these parts. Uh, we'll not leave without saying goodbye. And... Adios, Fireball. Adios. 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 <laughs> Any time I can help you, mister, just let me know. Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, Goodbye. Goodbye. I was loco to listen to you, Tug. If I'd had any brains, I'd never have gone along with your idea to frame that masked man. <laughs> You sure picked the wrong man when you tried to frame the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.